I want to direct your attention to the 23rd Psalm today. You know, we got a lot going on in our world. You guys have been doing uh, how not to be a jerk and uh, talking about, you know, when things are unexpected and anger and uh, harsh words and rest and stuff. And, you know, sometimes we can get so, there's so much going on in our world right now. Like Casey and I were talking with, pretty sure we're on the third or fourth seal of Revelation by now with the uh, Sahara Desert swarm going over the top of us right now. It's crazy. What in the world? This is a nuts year. And, um, but I just want to kind of just simplify everything for you today and just take you back to Psalm 23 and just remind you who our God is for a few minutes and just the, what our job is as his sheep. And so, um, you know, when you're growing up, did you ever, uh, like, wish you were a certain animal? You know what I'm talking about? You ever see one of those things like, like what animal do you wish you could be? And so people are like, I want to be an eagle, man, because, you know, they're huge and they fly and they go up in the storms and they do all these cool things. Or I want to be a cheetah because they're super fast, you know, and, um, they, you know, they, 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 nobody can outrun them and all that stuff. Or I want to be a lion, the king of the jungle, and everything is mine that the light touches, you know, and stuff like that. But whatever it is, you know, I've never heard anybody say, well, I want to be a sheep. Sheep are just weird animals, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, sheep require more attention than any other animal on earth. They, they have no defense mechanisms, right? And like a skunk, if you get close to them, they'll spray you and you're going to stink for a long time, right? Porcupine shoots quills out at you or whatever. You know, a possum, at least they play dead, you know? A chameleon can change colors. Lions, tigers, bears, oh my, they can eat you, things like that. A sheep, they had nothing, you know, they're just nothing. The only protection they have is their shepherd, you know what I'm saying? And hopefully he's gonna take care of them. And so that's just the way they are. And so sheep are weird, they have mob instincts. If one sheep freaks out, all the sheep freak out, you know, and they're gonna just run off the edge of a cliff because they just, they, they're scared. They're kind of real skittish type animals. They're, they, uh, they're, they're prone to get lost. Sheep have a tendency to put their head down and start eating and they just keep eating and eating and they look up and everybody's gone. And they're like, oh no, I'm by myself and I know what happened. Happens when, they, when you do that and you're on the Discovery Channel, right? You know, somebody's going to eat you, right? And so sheep are like that. And sheep can be um, fearful and timid and stubborn all at the same time. They're just, they're, they're weird animals. And honestly, I, they're just not very smart. They're just not very smart animals. And yet, you know, what's funny is the Bible compares you and I to sheep. Yeah, sorry, there's bad news today, right? <laughs> The Bible compares us to sheep. Jesus it said, we're the sheep of his pasture. The Bible, uh, Jesus looked on the crowds and he said, they're lost. They're like sheep without a shepherd, you know, being harassed. And, and so we're, we're, we're kind of that same way, you know. We, we have a tendency to follow the mob, you know, and doing crazy things. We, we can be fearful and timid and stubborn all at the same time. Sometimes we're just not very smart. We don't make very great decisions, you know. Um, and, and so with, with that in mind, I just want to walk you through the 23rd Psalm today. Because the 23rd Psalm really is a year in the life of a shepherd. Because typically a shepherd takes a sheep in winter and they, are, they are stay at the ranch. And as, as things start warming up, he'll go out and kind of find a path and where he wants to take his sheep and get fields and things ready. And then as, as it starts warming up, spring gets there, he'll take the sheep out of the farm and they'll be begin to make the ascent out into the mountains and up the hills. And as the snow begins to recede off of the mountains and melt in the summer, the sheep go up there and late in the summer, they're way up in the top of the mountains, eating on these great, beautiful pastures that, that nobody ever gets to except during that time of year. And then as it starts to get cold and snow, they begin to work their way back down the mountain. And then eventually they end up back on the farm again for winter time, work it out, and then they go out again. And so Psalm 23 walks us through that entire process. And, and you, you've also seen the stuff on the internet, the memes that says you only had one job? You know what I'm talking about? It's like you only had one job and some guy paints on the street, stop, but he spells it S-O-T-P, right? Or, you know, uh, they, they, they put a, a, a ramp where there's a pole in the middle of the walkway. Just somebody messed something up. Like, dude, you had one job and you couldn't even get it right, you know? You and I have one job. As sheep that belong to Jesus, we have one job. A sheep's only job is to stay close to the shepherd, all right? Everybody say that. Stay close to the shepherd. That's the only job we have. And while we have this crazy pandemic going on and they're opening the seals of the book of Revelation and all this stuff's going crazy, you know, I just want to remind you, you have one job today. Don't worry about all that stuff. Your job is to stay close to the shepherd. 
And if you'll do that part, everything else kind of tends to fall in place. And so let's walk through this today. It starts out, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I love that. You know, we are so blessed, or if, you're, if you're, you know, you can say lucky, but then a Christian will get on to you because, no, you're not lucky, you're blessed. But whatever, we are so lucky and blessed that God is our shepherd, that we have Jesus to be our shepherd. My daughter is a, a missionary to Peru, and when all this stuff got nuts, they were going to keep them there, and then finally at the last minute, they brought them all home, flew a plane and picked them all up. Well, my daughter last year got a little cocker spaniel that she loves. This picture of my daughter up here, they'll put it in a minute. She's sitting on her motorcycle with her little cocker spaniel dog. And, and in Peru, most people have dogs, but they don't really have dogs. They just kind of wander the streets, they eat whatever, they do their thing, and they may come around every once in a while. People don't really care for them, that kind of thing. Well, that's not my daughter. She's your typical American. Her dog's her baby. You know, if it gets sick, she goes to the vet. Down there, the vet costs $3, so it's okay. You know, but, but that dog's everything. It's like kind of her buddy. She lives in an apartment by herself in a foreign country, right? Right? And so that dog's her buddy. And when all this stuff started happening, they said, we're going to bring you home. She freaked out. She's like, how am I going to get my dog home? Can my dog even come home, you know? And all that stuff. And through a lot of prayer and scary times and blah, 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 she finally got to bring that dog home. And uh, the other day, I was just sitting out on my back porch. And I don't have grandkids. My son is married, lives in Tennessee. They don't have kids. My daughter's not married yet. So any you single guys want to go to Peru, she's pretty good looking. So... Um, <laughs> We can work out a deal, a dowry thing, you know what I'm saying? Man, we'll do it, all right? But, but, but I, I'm sitting in the backyard that day, and, and we, we don't have a great backyard, but we've got a pool, and we, it's got a little bit of room back there, and that dog is just going nuts. It's jumping in the pool and swimming laps, and it gets out, and it takes off on one of the dog runs around the yard, and I'm thinking, man, that dog is so lucky that my daughter picked it when she went, because she went to the store, and there were a couple of them there, the breeder, and she picked that dog, and I thought, that dog has no clue how lucky he is that my daughter picked it, picked her because like not only did was she had a little apartment in Peru and she got treated well and everything, but now she's got this yard and she's an American and she gets good food and she's taken care of and she has all this junk she can do. And I just thought, you know, it reminded me again this verse, I am so lucky that the Lord is my shepherd. You know, I don't have somebody else being my shepherd. I used to have a shepherd that, that was evil and mean and he didn't care about me. He came to still kill and destroy my life. But now I have a new shepherd and his name is Jesus. And I belong to him. And uh, because of that, I am so blessed that he is my shepherd. He's a good shepherd, the Bible says. He's a good shepherd because if, if, if the enemy comes or if something comes to kill the sheep, you know what he does? He'll lay down his life for those sheep. Yet there's a hireling another kind of shepherd that if he sees somebody coming, he's going to run for his life because he doesn't care about the sheep. They're just a commodity to him. They're a way to make money or something else that he can get something out of them. He's selfish. He cares about his own life. But my shepherd, he laid down his life for the sheep. We have a good shepherd today, and his name is Jesus. And I'm so blessed today, and so are you, that he picked us to be part of his flock. You know, we can read that and we can say, well, the Lord is my shepherd. But really the way you should read it is the Lord is my shepherd. Because see, he doesn't belong to me. I belong to him. I think too many of us as Christians, we look at the Lord belonging to us. We think, well, Jesus, come and bless my activities. Hang out with me for the day. You know what? Jesus said, follow me. My job is to follow him. My job is to figure out what he's doing, to hang out with him and to be with him. He doesn't, he's not my co-pilot. Hopefully he's flying the thing because I don't know what I'm doing. Amen? And so the Lord is my shepherd and he bought me with his life and he has marked me and sealed me with his Holy Spirit. And you know what? Because of that, I, I don't have any want. I don't have to want anything. In fact, he is, he is the God who provides all of my needs. He, the Bible says in, in Philippians 4.19 that my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. You know the cool thing about God is not only he supplies your needs, but did you hear what he said? I shall not want. Sometimes when, you're, when you line up with God, he even supplies your wants. Have you ever had something that you kind of always wished you had and all of a sudden somebody gives it to you or something happens and you get it and you're like, I didn't even pray about that. I didn't even ask about that. It's just the Lord did it. You know what I'm saying? It's like a favor. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not even want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. You know, something about sheep is that sheep hardly ever lay down. First of all, they're really kind of stupid and they have a hard time getting up, but but in all honesty, sheep don't lay down unless they are totally at peace 
There's nothing around that's scaring them. Then they might lay down. But the Lord makes us to lie down in green pastures. And he creates an environment of peace and security where we don't mind laying down. And he leads me beside still waters. Not still water, okay? (laughs) But beside still waters. He leads us beside those. But you know what? Have you noticed that God has a tendency to lead you into what you need in your life? (laughs) As I said earlier, the shepherd, before summer gets there, he'll go out into the fields and he'll start clearing fields. They'll clear them of rocks. If you've ever been to, like, Ireland, they have these huge rock walls that have been there for years because some shepherds over time have cleared those rocks out. They'll pull out some of the poisonous berries that are in the fields. They'll go to some of the rivers and streams and clear up the beaver dams so the water's not stagnant, it's free-flowing, and it's good water. They prepare the way for the sheep. And I've got good news for you today. The shepherd that we get to be a part of, he has gone gone before us. If Jesus ever asked you to do anything, can I tell you he's been there and done that, right? And bought the t-shirt. He leads us into the right places. And there's things in my life maybe that I don't like to do sometimes, but I know that they're the best thing for me. Sometimes God doesn't give me what I want. He gives me what I need. And he leads me beside those still waters. You know, he, he does that. The, the, The cool thing about God is he knows everything that we need. In fact, Jesus taught us to pray. He said, give us this day our daily bread. You know, the way that really reads is, give me today the bread that you prepared for me today. That was interesting. The thing about manna is you didn't get manna for tomorrow. You got manna for today, right? And God makes a way. He always seems to lead us exactly into what we need for the moment, And so he works that into our lives and gives us that. And then he restores my soul. He restores my soul. The word restores means to repair or to fix, to to bring it back to life. And he repairs my soul. I said sheep don't lay down a lot. If you've ever seen a picture of a cast sheep, um, it's pretty funny. There's a picture here they're going to put on the screen. Sometimes sheep lay down or they'll get stuck in a spot like that and they call it a cast sheep and they can't get up. I mean, you've heard it right before. I've fallen and I can't get up. It's true for sheep. That's a real picture of a cast sheep. And he will lay there until a lion, a bear, or a, a wild li- mountain lion or something comes and eats him or until the shepherd helps him get up because he's like, nye, nye, nye. he can't get up. All right? Sometimes sheep get stuck like that because they have too much wool on them, too much baggage in their life, and they get stuck, and they can't get up. Sometimes it's because they lay down in a little comfortable place, and it kind of sinks in. It's like a hole in the ground, and they get stuck because they can't get out of it. Sometimes they're just too fat, <laughs> and they can't get up, you know? And so we're kind of that same way, right? Sometimes there's just too much baggage in our life, or we're too comfortable, and we can get stuck in some places where we can't get out of them. And Jesus comes along as our shepherd, and he He restores us. He repairs us. He heals us. And what did it say? He restores my soul. Your body has a spiritual part of you that connects to God. You have a fleshly part of you that connects to this world and doesn't like to submit to God. And then your soul is kind of this neutral ground. It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. And God comes along, and, and that part of you always follows one or the other, the flesh or the spirit, whichever you feed in your life. And so what God does is he comes along and he restores your soul. He restores your mind, your thought life. How do you know when you got clean, when Jesus saved you, he starts the process of renewing your mind so you can be conformed to the image of Christ. He restores your will, which is your decision-making part of you, that, that, that part of you that decides, I'm going to choose to follow God. He repairs that and heals that to where you start making good decisions. And he restores your thought life, your, your, your emotional life, your feelings. How many of you know your feelings will lie to you sometimes? And if we're not careful, sometimes we can believe. You can feel something, and just because you feel it doesn't mean it's true. I get in trouble with my wife all the time because I don't feel the same way about things that she feels, right? And she thinks I should respond the same way she does, and I don't. I'm just a different person, you know? I'm a little more chill. She's a little more crazy. Anyway, uh, but uh, are they putting this online? I'm in trouble, all right? So I didn't say that part. I was talking about my, somebody else. Anyway, um, but you know what I'm saying? As, sometimes your feelings will lie to you, and, but God comes and he restores your feelings of you. He changes those things and brings you back in line and repairs you. He restores our soul. And then he says this, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. I love that because God leads me, and I have to learn to trust in his leading. 
See, shepherds lead sheep. If you've ever seen a shepherd in a field, he doesn't walk behind the sheep. He walks in front of the sheep. Usually he sings or talks, and the sheep follow him wherever he goes. He's an example to them. A lesson in leadership is you, can, you drive cattle, and they don't like you for it, but you lead sheep by example. And so he leads us in the way that we should go, and we trust him, and he keeps us moving because sheep, sheep kind of can be bad for the land because in one sense, sheep will eat about anything. They're kind of like goats, you know what I'm saying? You've seen people feed goats get cans. <laughs> but you can feed them stuff, but not only do they eat the, the, all the, the stuff that's above the ground, they tend to dig up the roots and eat the roots too, and so what happens is nothing ever grows there again. And so what the shepherd has to do is keep them moving because they say if a, a field can get sheeped, and that means it's just pretty much raped clean. There's nothing else there. And so he keeps them moving. That's why God keeps moving us and leading us, because he's trying to get us to some better food sources. And because, you know, when we get stuck in places and get settled there, we can ruin that place. And so he keeps us moving along the line. And so he leads us, and he leads us in the paths of righteousness. You know, righteousness just means to be right with God. It's right thinking, right living. And you and I, left to ourselves, we're not real good at that. We kind of have a tendency to do the wrong things. And so we want his righteousness. We, none of us could save ourselves. That's why Jesus came and died on the cross for us. And we are clothed in his righteousness. The Bible says our righteousness is just dirty rags. But his righteousness cleanses us from all sin. And he makes us to be right with God. And so he leads us in those paths of righteousness. You know, when I stand before God one day, what it means to be a Christian is that I am trusting in the sacrifice of Jesus from my life. God's not gonna declare me innocent at judgment day. Even, even you, I'm sorry, he's gonna say you're guilty. But you know why we get to go free? Because the Passover lamb paid the price for you and me. And so because of that, he doesn't, it's double jeopardy. He don't punish two, two people. We get to go free because he punished Jesus for our sins. And as a Christian, I'm trusting that when I stand before God, Jesus is my savior. And I'm believing in that. And so he leads me in that path of righteousness. And you know why he does it? For his namesake. Because I represent him. You, know, you can tell a lot about people by, by the stuff they own. You know, we judge people all the time by the car they drive or what their yard looks like, you know, how their kids act at Walmart in the checkout line when they want a million-dollar bar. <laughs> we do, don't we? You know, and so we look at the parent, we go, oh, you just should have fixed that, right? How many of you, before you had kids, said, my, if my kid ever does that, I'll do this, and then you found out you're a liar, amen? So, and so the sheep are the same way. You could look at a sheep and you could tell by the way they were, were taken care of whether they had a good shepherd or not. And so Jesus leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Every one of us are a billboard for Jesus. We're a billboard for Foundations Church. The way we live our lives, how we respond at Walmart because somebody wants us to wear a mask or somebody's mad because we are wearing a mask. You know what I'm saying? You, you, nowadays you don't know what to do. The point is, is we represent him. When David sinned with Bathsheba, Nathan said, look, you've given all the enemies of God a reason to blaspheme God. Now, that had to hurt David as much as anything. But he leads us in righteousness, right living, right thinking, right doing, for his name's sake, because then we bring glory to God, and other people see Jesus in us, and then they want to follow him, and they want to serve him. And so that's what Christian maturity is all about. We move from being self-centered to being other centered and then finally to being God-centered, where all of our life is about making him famous and glorifying him. And so he leads us in those ways. And then he says this, I love it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. Why? Because you are with me. Because your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And so there are times that, that we don't have to be afraid when we stick with the shepherd. Again, as a sheep, we can run off and be scared. We can fall over and faint, eh, like fainting goats or something, you know? Or we can be bold and strong. You know why? Because all we got to do is worry about the shepherd. If we're sitting there eating food and somebody says, wolf, and we look up, we can look at the wolf or we can look at our shepherd. And if you look at the shepherd, like, okay, that's cool. I'll keep eating, right? Because we know who our shepherd is. And so we can have no fear. Joseph, you know, you know in our, your life, Joseph has this great dream. Everybody's going to bow down. I'm going to be a leader. It's going to be awesome. 
Joseph just missed kind of the details that you're going to have to be sold into slavery. Your brother's going to hate you, throw you in a pit. Then you're going to go to this house and he's going to falsely accuse you of rape. And then you're going to get thrown in prison and you're going to hang out there for a couple of years. And then you're going to get to the place where everybody bows down to you. You know what I'm saying? It's like God's will. We think, oh, it's here to there. That's beautiful. We forget about this and that <laughs> before we get there, right? And yet that's what the Lord does is he works with us. Sometimes we do walk through the valley of the shadow of death to be able to get to our destination. You know what the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1.7? It says, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. You know, when we're afraid, what we have a tendency to do is we lose our minds. We panic, we freak out, we can't think straight. You ever been so scared your muscles won't move? You're like, you ever had that dream where you're trying to run and you can't run? (laughs) It's right after the dream about going to school in your underwear. You know what I'm talking about? sometimes we get so scared. And so what he says is, listen, God doesn't give you fear. Where does fear come from? It comes from the enemy. You know what God gives you is love, power, and a sound mind. Who loves you more than God? Nobody. Who is more powerful than God? Nobody. So you know what the hard part is? The sound mind means, means a disciplined mind. You gotta remember that. Whenever you get fearful because of a pandemic, or because of a Sahara Desert storm, or because of a protest, or because of this or that, or whatever, anytime you get scared, you need to remember the person who loves me the most is the most powerful being on earth. I don't need to be afraid. Don't look at the wolf, look at the shepherd, amen? And so I walk through the valley of shadow. I don't have to be afraid because he's with me. He is with me. And his rod and his staff come from me. You know, the shepherd has that rod. They, they, they make those when they're young, when they first start out, and they'll literally take a, tr- a skinny tree and the bulb on the end, and they'll shave it and make it fit their hand, and they learn how to throw it like a javelin. They learn how to use it as a weapon. And we don't have to be afraid because our shepherd knows how to take care of us. He knows how to fight for us. And, and, and he, that comforts us, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Because you know what? Then it says this, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies enemies. We're going through these valleys because we're going to the mountaintop. Anytime a shepherd takes a, the sheep through the, the, the crevices and the cracks to get them up the mountain, the, he has to do that to get them to the mountaintop. And, and, and it's scary in those places because there could be rock slides, there could be predators that hide in there and all kinds of things. But you've got to remember the journey. The journey is going to the mountaintop. In fact, those valleys, those mountaintop places, uh, the Spanish word for for table is the word mesa. In fact, in several languages, the the, the word for mesa means table. I was just in Colorado the other day. We went over Grand Mesa. It just means big table because it's a big flat top. And so do you catch the picture? He says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not afraid. He's with me. His rod and staff comfort me. And he's taking me to the mountaintop. He's going to take me through this valley right in front of all my enemies, these predators. And I'm going to get to the mountaintop. And there's this beautiful green pasture for me to eat from. And I'm going to sit down and I'm going to eat right in front of all the people that want to kill me and destroy me and ruin my life. He's taking me to the mountaintop, the the place. In fact, the root of that word means spread. At Thanksgiving, you sit down, there's all the food on the table. You go, wow, what a spread. It's because that's what God's doing. He's taking you up and I up to, to enlarge us, to spread us out, to let us feed on the best of the land. And so when I was a kid, we'd sing the old song, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Can I just tell you? God sometimes walks us through those valleys, but he's taking us to the higher ground, a place where we can relax and rest. And he's going to feed us, you know what, right in front of our enemy. I think he does that just to tick them off. (laughs) My daughter's little dog, and we have a golden retriever, or a golden doodle. That's when a couple of those dogs hook up. But that dog's really cool. It's a great big sister. It's like just chill dog, you know. And uh, But it's funny. Anytime any animal in our house goes near my daughter's door, the little dog's like over there. Whoa, hey, time out. Whoa, you're going towards my food. Chill out, dude. You can't go in there, right? And she stands guard by that door. You know, dogs won't eat in front of another dog, typically, because they're, they're, they're worried about that other dog. When this pandemic broke out, you know what I'm saying? Some of you probably ate like pigs, and some of you probably didn't eat because you were freaked out by it, you know? My wife lost 10 pounds. I found it. You know what I'm saying? And so that, that happens because, because you're anxious. But you know what the Lord says? He's such a good shepherd that he says, I'll let you eat. You'll be so at peace, you will sit down and eat right in the presence of all your enemies around watching you eat. 
And that's the kind of shepherd that we have today. And I just want to encourage you that we can relax in front of him. He wants us to be at peace. And then it says this, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. You know, sheep are notorious for all kinds of crazy diseases. In the summertime, they get these nasal fleas that, that, that get an infection, and it, sometimes it can make them go blind. And so the shepherd has these weird concoctions of sulfur and linseed oil and all kinds of stuff they'll mix up, and they'll smear it all over the sheep's nose. They take oil that they make on their own, and sheep are notorious for button heads, you know, and they rub their heads on each other, and they get this thing called scab all over them. And the shepherd will take his staff and move it where he can get down to the skin and he'll rub that oil on them. And what this passage is just simply saying is, is the Lord heals us up. He heals our wounds. He, he fights off those infections, those things that get on the inside of us and begin to irritate us and affect us and affect our relationships with others. The Lord wants to heal those things in our life in such a way. He has an anointing oil to put on us and that oil is for healing. Healing. <laughs> the Bible says in Acts 10 38 that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit with power, and he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. So this morning, maybe you need a healing of something that's going on on the inside of you. Or sometimes oil was used to anoint people to do ministry. And I love the idea here. He says, He anoints my head with oil and my cup overflows. Every one of us that do ministry to other people, it is the overflow of our relationship with God. Again, if we'll just stay close to the shepherd, I just want to encourage you, in all that's going on in the world doesn't matter. You love Jesus. And you know what happens out of that? It will flow out of you to love other people. It'll flow out of you to care about other people, to treat everybody the same, because it'll flow out of you because God anoints you to do ministry from the overflow. And that leads right into the final parts here, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I remember growing up this weekend, 4th of July weekend, my family always went to Ten Killer Lake. And we would go and we would water ski and hang out and fish and stuff. And water skiing, you're always looking for the smoothest water. You know what I'm saying? You, like in the evening or in the morning, you get around some of those islands and you're on the opposite side of the wind and the, gla and the water looks like glass. You know what I'm talking about? And you can get out there and you can ski outside the wake and it's smooth. And he says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I want to ask you, what's in your wake? A few weeks ago, I was in Colorado, and we went up to northwest Colorado through Utah into Wyoming, and there's a gorgeous place up there called Flaming Gorge that I'd never even heard of. It's called Flaming Gorge because the rocks on the side are all red and stuff, and we were watching it, and down there, it's like 1,500 feet deep, and there's, it's like, I think, like the Grand Canyon with a lake in it. There's a picture here, and, and it's just beautiful. And it, the water was so smooth. And then this boat comes through there, just solitary boat all by itself. And you could see the wake behind that boat. And I thought of this passage. What follows in your wake? When you go to a place or you hang out with somebody or at a family reunion or what, what always follows behind you? David said, I want goodness, which means God-likeness, Christ-likeness, and mercy, the way God treats me, the way I treat other people, to follow in my wake. You know, sheep, I said, they can be really destructive to the land. But one thing cool about sheep, they also can be some of the best animals you could ever have on your property because sheep eat such a variety of, of, of weeds and stuff that their manure, honestly, is really good stuff. It's worth a lot of money. They, matter of fact, in old literature, they called them golden hooves because it was so good. If you could get sheep on your land, it would flourish and it would grow because it would, it would put a lot of nutrients into the soil and fertilize the soil. Isn't that a beautiful picture of you and me? That whenever we go into a relationship or we're around other people, we should leave that place better than it was when we got there because in our wake follows goodness, Christ-likeness, and follows mercy. And it makes a difference in other people's lives. And literally, that the, the we bless them by the fact that they were there. And so then we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One thing that's really cool, again, like I said, this psalm is a cycle of year in the life of a shepherd and his sheep. In fact, the root word of the word dwell is I will return to the house of the Lord is the idea. You know, the whole Bible started out with man and, and woman in a garden with God, hanging out with him, having to, just being close to him. Mankind decided we thought we knew better, we went our own way, we've messed everything up. And the Bible ends with kind of the same thing. You and I in a garden with God, 
In fact, the word paradise is a Persian word that means walled garden. When a king wanted to honor somebody, he invited them over and they give them access to his garden where, with this hedge around it and you could hang out there freely. Can I just tell you, God is wanting you and I to return back to the garden with him and to be with him. You know what makes heaven heaven? God's there. You know what makes hell hell? God's not there. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 1, 8, 9 that hell is to be away from the presence of the Lord forever. It's as if people say, God, I don't want you telling me what to do. I don't want you running my life. I want to do my own thing. I think I know better. And God finally says, okay, for all of eternity, I'll let you have that life without me. But heaven is life with him, getting to be with him for all of eternity. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord, return to the house of the Lord forever and ever. You know, that's that's the greatest thing, is that you and I are so lucky, so blessed that he is our shepherd. You know, all through the Bible, names mean something. Names mean something. They told us a lot about the character or the city or whatever it was. Those names meant something. And all throughout Scripture, God has revealed himself to you and me through his names. A lot of you know the names of God, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider, Jehovah Ropha, the Lord our healer, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. He's the one that we rally around and he carries everything for. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. And those are ways God revealed himself to us. When, when Moses met God for the first time in Exodus 3 at the burning bush, he said, God, I don't know if I can do this. I don't even know your name really well. And I love what God said. He said, I am that. I am. Whatever you need me to be in that moment, I am that. I am. And so this morning as we close, I just want to remind you of the 23rd Psalm. Because the 23rd Psalm has all those names of God in it. You know why? Because we're so blessed that he's our shepherd. In fact, in verse 1 it says, Jehovah Rohi, he is the Lord my shepherd. That's what that word means. He's the Lord our shepherd. And in verse 2 it said he, he leads us, makes us lie down in green pastures, and he leads us beside still waters. He, he provides for us because he's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. And then it says in verse 3 that he restores my soul. He's Jehovah Nisi, my banner. When an enemy was tired, an army was fighting and they were tired, they would raise that banner and everybody would cheer and get excited. It's like a football game when they did the wave and they rally us and they restore our soul. And then he's the Lord our righteousness because he leads us in paths of righteousness for his namesake. He's Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. And I don't have to be afraid in the valley of the shadow of death because he is with me. He's Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is present. And then he lets me sit down and eat right in front of all my enemies. When I should be afraid, I can be calm and I can eat because he is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, my peace. And then when I have scabs and wounds and things on my body, he anoints me with his oil and he heals me because he's Jehovah Ropha, the Lord, my healer. We have a good shepherd this morning, folks. And we have one job as sheep, to stay close to the shepherd. And whatever you're going through today, maybe you're distressed, maybe you're discouraged, maybe you're without a job, maybe you need a healing in your body, maybe your marriage is on the rocks, maybe you got a habit that you can't seem to kick. Whatever you're going through in your life, can I tell you, Jesus is your answer. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He provides. Lord, thank you today that you're our shepherd. Thank you, Jesus, that you drew us to you and you bought us at the market and you brought us back into the fold. And today we belong to you. And Lord, everything that we need, it's all found in you. Lord, I pray for those today maybe that are discouraged, that are fearful, Lord, that having trouble sleeping. Today you are their their answer. You're the God that's there. You're the God that will provide for them. You're our shepherd, Lord. I pray for those that have relationships that are struggling, Lord, and and, and maybe some unforgiveness or bitterness or just conflict, Lord, that, 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 that frustrates us, it stresses us out, that today, God, you're our shepherd and you bring healing to our lives and you bring ministry to us. Lord, there's some today that need direction. God, I pray that if that's you, just speak to him right now. I need direction. They need to know what to do. Maybe they lost a job. They're trying to figure out which one they should take or what opportunities there are. Lord, you lead us. You lead us in your path and you direct our lives. And I thank you for that this morning, Lord. Lord, there's some here today that need healing in their bodies. 
If you need a healing in your body, just put your hand on whatever part of your body it is. If it's your mind or your emotions, just put your hand over your heart or over your mind. God, I believe right now that you are Jehovah Rapha. You said in your word, you are the God that heals us. And I believe right now you want to heal some people. Touch their bodies physically in the name of Jesus. Touch people emotionally right now. Lord, mentally right now. Be the shepherd that they need. Whatever they need you to be, you are that. You are. So God, I believe you to minister to them today. Lord, if there's anybody here today that doesn't know you as their Savior, if that's you this morning, just right now ask him to forgive you to come into your heart and cleanse you. Maybe the shepherd you've had has been evil and mean and wrecked your life. But this morning you say, I want a new shepherd. All you got to do is ask, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come in and cleanse me and change me. Lord, right now, do that in the name of Jesus. I bless you, Savior. I thank you that you're our answer. Thank you. Would you just thank him for a minute that he's your shepherd? Lord, that you're our shepherd. That we don't belong to somebody else. We are the sheep of your pasture, Lord, just said in your word. And you're a good shepherd. (laughs) You're a shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep, and we thank you for it, Lord. And Lord, help us just to stay close to you. Lord, when all the chaos around us is going on, Lord, it's like a hurricane. We can trust in you because your love is fierce, Lord. We cling to you and we rely on you. And Lord, we just stay close to you, and we believe you will lead us in a plain path. We magnify your name. Thank you for your presence this morning. We bless you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for taking time to join us today. Uh, We know your time is important, so thanks for joining us. Please make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can check us out as well on our social media. Thanks for joining us.